My hair is a mess. I'm still in my gym workout, but it's okay, guys. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and all that, everything in between. I, uh, <laughs> oh. Where do I begin? Oh. Well, it's snowing. No joke, it really is snowing. Uh, it's March, and it is snowing. It is snowing. And it's March. That side, oh, I had an interesting week so far. Got good news about the blood clots. I've already talked about those, but um, the last one is shrinking. Um, I took my last set of meds yesterday, so I'm done. My course is done. Um, I've got to wait 48 hours and change for it to leave my system, to be flushed out of my system. Um, and then once that's flushed out of my system, I can then go back to taking my cocodamol for my migraines until the migraines are gone. So that's good news. Um, kind of bummed because my local charity shop shut its doors for good. You know, you know the economy is bad when a charity shop is gone. And he had a thing on which is whatever DVDs you want, just take, you know. And I saw a whole bunch of Battlestar Galactica because I'm a huge Battlestar Galactica fan. And I've got seasons one, seasons two and seasons four. I'm missing season three. I've got, a, I've got a hunt for that on either Amazon or eBay. Um, and yes, I do actually prefer to own the physical medium. See, the physical medium. Reason being, um, it's just always good to have if you've got no internet because of the weather or whatever. And you've got a PlayStation 3 like I do, or a, you know, technically, or even a laptop with an optical drive. You can watch music, you can watch TV, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. You know, you don't necessarily need, have to have the internet to, you know, watch a show. My daughter um, asked me a question yesterday and wanted me to answer it today in the coffee time. So I guess this is for you, Molly. She asked me to do a what if scenario. And that what if scenario being that I never went to America. So, in this scenario, I never went to the States. I never spent 13 years away from her. 13 years away from England. I think... Don't get me wrong, the relationship I have with my daughter is amazing. At least, I, from my perspective, in my end, it's amazing. Um, I do everything and anything I can for her. Not just because she's probably going to be watching this video, but it's the truth, I do. Um, I, if I don't even have two pennies to rub together and she needs something, I will reach into my pocket, deep into my pocket, if I have to. I will beg, steal, borrow, uh, uh, do what I have to for her. Because she's my daughter. She's my, my blood. I, in this what if scenario, I genuinely think that our bond would be a lot stronger. She'd probably have siblings that are full siblings, not half siblings. Um, not to go into too much detail, but her mum has got a few other children with other other fathers so same mum different dad so what i mean by four siblings i mean same mum same dad um even though i've got siblings that have you know same mum same dad or same dad different mum 
You know what I mean? Kind of thing. It doesn't matter. They're still my siblings. They're still my, my brothers, my sisters. It doesn't matter. Um, I genuinely feel that I, sh I, I could have and should have done better when it come to my relationship with her mum. I gave up. I, I personally feel, I personally feel I gave up too quickly. Um, and it's it's a cross I'll always bear. Which is why I do my best to, to give every other relationship in my life so many chances. Because I don't want that stigma hanging over my head of the fact that, you know, I I, I left, you know. Um, we definitely would not be living in our old apartment. <laughs> we would definitely be living in a different apartment. Um, probably in Cambridge with the rest of the family. I feel that the bond that she had would have had that she has with her cousins now, my 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 siblings' children, would be a lot stronger than it is. Even though it is it is strong, don't get me wrong, it is strong, but I feel it would be stronger if that makes sense. I feel it would be a lot stronger. Um, work wise, I would probably be doing private security off and on like I've been doing in the past um, probably and I hate to say this probably still be doing adult content wouldn't have done Twitch wouldn't have done YouTube um, wouldn't have made all the friends that I have probably been in more contact with my older school friends who I'm just rekindling our friendships now um, who knows I could be even dead in that what if scenario because like I said you know when I used to work the doors uh, some gangs would see it as a badge of honour to try and beat up bouncers or even kill them this is why if you go to clubs up in Liverpool, Blackpool um, and even some clubs in South London you know, they they used to see it as a badge of honour if you could beat up a bouncer or or, or cut them or murder them or shoot them or whatever. I've I've, to my knowledge, then this is back in the nineties when the SIA wasn't even a thing. So that's how long ago it's, I've been a bouncer. I've been doing personal security. Um, there was a spree of gang members, Jamaican gang members going around and just pulling up to a, a nightclub queue getting out and walking up to the door as if they're you know VIP whatever and the moment a bouncer puts his hand out to say hey hang about who are you they'd pull out a sh they'd pull out a double bell sawn off and just double tap <sighs> gone hop in the car and drive away I lost two of my mates that way. One up in um, Blackpool. He got stabbed. I think he got stabbed like three or four times. Two, two, of, the, two of the wounds went right into his heart. Right into the side. So they, whoever stabbed him knew what they were doing. They were looking to kill. They were looking to kill. The other one got shot. Because he, he refused to let a 15 year old girl into a club with a 20 something year old boyfriend. So he went home, come back with a shooter and shot my friend in the head. That's when my grandmother, my nan, started to truly worry about me and she bought me a stab proof vest. I was like, nan, I ain't gonna do nothing for a bullet. And that's when she begged and pleaded with me to get out, to get out of the 
that that sort of line of work. And at the time, it was only the line of work that was paying bills that were worth paying, if you know what I mean. So I ended up working for someone else. And, um, yeah, and then the opportunity arose for me to go to America, so I left. So take that into account that the, the opportunity has been taken off the table. Um, I'd probably still be a goon. Or dead. Or in prison. Um, yeah, pretty much. That, that sums it up. Um, would I be, would I probably have married your mum? Yes, most likely. <laughs> make it an honest woman of her and she'd make an honest man of me. See, don't get me wrong. I love, I love my ex. I do. I love her. She's an amazing woman, an amazing mother. She really is. And she will do anything for her kids, just like I will. And when it comes to to, to our daughter, God, we are both fiercely defensive of her. As you should be as a parent, you know? As you should be. So thank you for your question, Molly. I hope I answered it. What else? Um... World's going to shit. I don't know why people can't just love each other. Ukraine conflict. January 6th and all this other stuff. and We've got to stop pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other. And we've got to come to the table. And we've got to sit down and we've got to hold hands and we've got to truly feel the fact that the person next to us has a heartbeat like we do. I'm lucky because one of my favorite phrases is I'd rather be a samurai in a garden than a gardener on the battlefield. I'm lucky to be that samurai in the garden. And I'm telling you, I am tired of watching this world just kill itself. I'm tired of this world of people blaming other people for their own mistakes. Uh, I still want to know in what logical universe if two people if two black people kill each other, how is that white racism? If black people are attacking Asian people and vice versa, how is that white racism? It, it, it makes no sense. Stop, stop blaming each other. And I'm not saying this because, you know, I, I'm white. Okay, I don't blame black people for the snow. I don't blame Chinese people for bad DVDs. I don't. It, it, at the end of the day, stop blaming people. Stop. As I've always said, I prefer constructive criticism. If you want to shoot down an idea, that's fine. Shoot down the idea. But at least have an idea of your own. Okay? End of. At least have an idea of your own. Pointing out a broken window. Okay, yeah, the window's broken. And what? Either you fix the window by replacing the glass, or you board the window up. It's all you can do. But if you're just content to just sit there and go, Windows broken. Windows broken. Windows broken. Win I get it, Karen. I get it. The window's broken. I get it. Did you break the window? No. Did you see who broke the window? No. Okay. Thank you for pointing out to me, Karen. Now move along. 
and I'll fix the window. That's my point. Too many people are content with just standing there filming. They see kids fighting and they're too busy doing this. Oh, oh, oh! It's like, how about you put the phone down and tell them, stop fighting, talk it out, use your words. Nobody wants to do that. Everyone's just content filming it. This is why I like... So there are certain countries that will arrest and charge the person filming as well as the person doing the attacks. Think about it, okay? On American law... In American law, as well as most other laws, if you are a getaway driver... Okay, of a bank heist and someone on your crew kills someone else or hurts someone else or, 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 or shoots someone else the person in the car who didn't own the gun who had no intention of hurting anyone who has no intention of hurting anyone still gets roped in on that murder charge on that on that assault charge or whatever or whatever whatever why can't you do the same for the idiots that stand there and just film. You'd see a lot more people caring about their community when their own freedoms are at stake. And I'm going to point something out, which is a bit of a hip, a bit of a hypocrisy. At what point do people realise when you cheer to remove the rights? of your opponents okay and put it into law that the right to assemble or the right, right to right to religious freedoms or the second amendment or even here in the uk like the right to silent prayer i can't right now in good conscience close my eyes and say a silent prayer in public i will be arrested for wrong think now someone of my opposing religion might be cheering that oh yeah arrest that heathen well, what happens when you do it and you get arrested Wait, well, why are you arresting me think about it when you use a law or make a law or come up with a a, a reason for a restriction on someone at what point in your fuzzy little brain do you not realize that that same thing that you just welded on someone else can be welded on you? Think. Think. It's not illegal yet. Think. I'm so sick and tired of hearing blasphemy laws coming into effect and, and Sharia law. We are, England's a Christian country, okay? We're not a Muslim country. We're not an Islamic country. So guess what? You can go fuck yourself. Ah, oh, someone ruined the Holy Quran. O okay. Buy a new one. If I bought a King James right now and someone defaced the front of it, am I going to get upset? No. I'd say to him, okay, why did you do that? And if they say, oh, you, you Christian heathen, this, that, 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 that's a hate crime. But can I report that? No, because I'm white. I'm the wrong skin color. That right there is racism. That is the definition of racism. Look up the actual definition of racism. It does not say anywhere that blah, 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 it's the white man's fault. It literally says 
a racial hatred towards someone's colour or religion. Is white not a colour? So, but people don't seem to understand that. I just want the world to stop hating itself. I just want people to stop hating themselves. I want, I want communities to help each other. I want our police to do their damn fucking job and arrest the bastard rape gangs. I don't care what their religions are. You had no problem doing it when it was a freaking Catholic priest and the, the Catholic church. You had no problem arresting them. Is that not a religion? But yet you refuse to prosecute the others. Someone's not right there. I don't hate anyone. There's no more room in my heart for hate. And it's a known fact. I've never hated anyone for the colour of their skin. One of my bosses was black. I've served with black people. I've served with Asian people. I've served with the Gurkhas. I've served with uh, Jesus, um, Hispanics. I've 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 worked with Native Americans. And I've loved every single one of them. I have no hatred in my heart for anyone. My daughter is dating a black a, a, a black boy. And you know what? Met the kid absolutely... I can't even call him a kid now. He's a young man. Met the young man. Absolute blinder of a guy. Head over heels in love with her. And she's head over and heels in love with him. And I could not be more happier for them. I really couldn't. As long as they're good to each other. And as long as they don't hurt each other. I don't care who she loves. Love is love. Okay, love is love. I just care that she's happy and that she's safe. That's all I care about. That's it. I genuinely don't care. I never have. Never will. <laughs> and yet some people, when I was serving time in the States, in, in, in jail, I, I had a shaved head and a horrible goatee kind of thing because that's what my ex-wife liked on me and when I went in there all the Aryan brothers thought I was a Nazi and so they were sucking up to me it's like how many n-words have you stabbed how many how many wetbacks and I hate that word how, how many yeah and I'm like what the fuck are you talking about dude leave me the fuck alone you know my soulmate was black diabetic in the morning I would literally take my juice my carton of juice and I would leave, leave it to the side. And I would leave it in my cell. And I would always say to my, my cellmate, Willie, I'm like, Willie, if you need that orange juice as a pick-me-up, mate, it's right there, brother. And he'd always say to me, he's like, dude, why? Why, why? why do you care about me? And I'm like, well, we're roommates. Involuntary roommates. But point is, you know, we've got to take care of each other. I want to know that if things go sideways, you've got my back. As much as you know, if things go sideways, I've got your back. I've got your six. And after that, half the damn cell block loved me. The other half hated me. Because I refused to associate with any gangs. I didn't associate with the blacks, or the Hispanics, or the Native Americans, or, or the whites. Or whatever. I, I, I stayed neutral. I stayed Switzerland. And the funny thing was. Not a single one of them could remember my name. So they just nicknamed me England. Because I'm English. Literally it would be like. England. What's up dude? 
<laughs> and it'd be like, change your channel for me. All right. There you go, man. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. Um, and I served 90 days um, with time served for... To me, it was a self cut a, a, a self. It was a, it was a it was a cut a, a, a full case of self defense. But district attorney was going for re-election or something that year, and he wanted to make an example. And so, even though the judge was like, "You do realize this is self defense, right?" And he acknowledged that it was self defense, and he wanted me to go to jail for four years, years. And the judge was like, "No, I'm giving him ninety days with time served, which I'd already served." 30 something days while waiting to be seen in court so the judge is like plus is on work release because I was working at the time <laughs> so I was in for three days and then out for for the rest to work and then back in for three and that and then da, 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 da. and I eventually got it done in like nine months eventually I got all, all the days caught up and whatnot my fine was paid off um you can even look this up you know, I, I, I don't hide the fact um so yeah, it was, it was self-defense. I mean, when you don't say you're a cop, you don't show a badge, you just pull a gun out, I'm sorry, my self-defense heckles come up. And so I grab twist, throw punch, disarmed him, unloaded the weapon, put it on the ground, and that's when he stood up, pulled out his detective's badge, and I was like, oh, fuck me sideways. And then I got arrested for assault and battery and um, resisting arrest. They dropped the resisting arrest charge and uh, they kept the assault and battery. Even though I didn't have a weapon. But, well, the coffee's done. So that means video's done. Anyway, guys, take care. And I'll see you in the next one.